How's it going, Cody? Yeah, you want to grab the leash or is it still in the car? Those were Pasco County Sheriff deputies who got quite the surprise when a man crashed a stolen vehicle into a ditch. He got out of his car. He had a monkey hanging onto his chest on a leash in a diaper. What's up, bud? Um, the deal is... Uh, Gonna have to go to the huh? Not right now. It's gonna have to go to a, a sanctuary here temporarily until you, you can figure out if you can get your licensing stuff squared away and if you can get it back. Um. Now here to break down this 2018 incident is former Sheriff Deputy Chad Ayers. Chad, thanks for coming on Law and Crime After Hours. How are you? Good, Sam. How you been? Doing well. Thanks again for uh, coming on, Chad. Appreciate it. So watching that video as a former sheriff deputy with over a decade of experience, how shocked were you that the carjacker had a monkey, uh, let alone a monkey in a diaper? There's no telling how many thousands of traffic stops and even felony traffic stops I conducted in my career. And there's a first time for everything because I did not anticipate this, especially somebody so compliant and then all of a sudden he gets out and this dude's got a damn monkey on a leash with him. I mean, I, I think that threw me for a loop more than anything. Well, not just the leash, but a diaper, too. And a diaper. You know, I don't know if that was because the monkey was about to crap its pants in the pursuit or what, but, like, something was going on there. Well, maybe he knew he was going to get pulled over after he stole a car, so he's like, hey, monkey, you got to put on a diaper just in case this goes down. Right, exactly. Uh, so, Chad, put yourself in those deputies' shoes. How would you have handled that situation? You know, honestly, I think they did an, uh, an unbelievable and, and showed so much of a level of professionalism. Um, in this type of situation. I mean, it, it is still a, a, a kind of a laughing matter, right? And I don't care who you are. All of a sudden you conduct a felony car stop on a stolen car and the guy gets out with a monkey and a diaper. There's, there's gotta, there's gotta be a sense of humor about this. Um, but you know, these, these deputies showed such, uh, respect. Um, and I think Sam, this is a perfect example of showing like, Hey, look, if you show law enforcement officers respect, you're going to get that same respect back. Um, this guy wasn't resisting or anything. He was, Hey, I screwed up. This is, you know, it's the gigs over. And those officers, you know, in exchange, you know, let him say bye to his monkey and, and everything else. Yes, they did. And we'll get to that. But you use the word, uh, professional to describe the officers. I'm not saying I wouldn't have done this cause I would have, but did you notice that one of the officers was taking pictures of the suspect and the monkey? Yeah, and I'll be honest, I, I'm sure there's people out there that are going to nitpick that. If that's the, the if that's the only thing that happened on this traffic stop after a monkey just got out of a car hugging a guy, I'm okay with it, even in a supervisory role. All right, I'm probably going to be like, dude, don't put this on social media. Don't be doing this, but you're sitting in the squad room. Nobody's going to believe you that you pulled over a guy in a stolen car with a monkey in a diaper on a leash. Plus, you know what? It's evidence of the crime. You know, the monkey happened to be in there, but this guy's talking about being in a stolen car and everything else. Sorry. I mean, like I said, I would have done the same thing, and I'm sure you probably would have too. Uh, <laughs> were you surprised how well behaved the monkey was? And have you ever had an animal encounter like that? Not for a monkey. Um, in fact, I, I will never forget being in, uh, like I said, when I was, before I went uh, onto the SWAT team and, and more of a tactical unit, um, as a patrol officer, a call came in one day about a guy in a truck with a cage, you know, uh, attached to the pickup truck that was driving down <clears throat> uh, one of our kind of a major highways with a tiger in the back. And I was oh my like, gosh. I, I'm like, all right, well, I'm a couple miles out and I'm thinking, who's the drunk person behind this guy that's thinking they're seeing a tiger? So I'm <laughs> telling you, it's middle of the day and I will never forget. I see this thing and, and I was like, all right, I'm getting close to the cops like, or the, the call takers. Like, yeah, I see the deputy approaching. And sure as hell, I get behind this thing and I was like, there's a freaking tiger in the back of this thing, like a caged tiger. I was curious, so I f didn't stop the guy. I just followed him all the way to his house. And uh, anyway, I was like, hey, I've heard about you. I just heard about you. Never knew about you. I just want to see how this thing works. So uh, very interesting. But yeah, that that's probably one of the the craziest situations I had in law enforcement. Um, yeah, but no, no monkey experiences. 
I was going to say dealing with a tiger is, is way different than dealing with a monkey. You, you, again, commended them for their professionalism. I think one of the reasons they were able to be so professional is, A, the alleged carjacker was professional and kind, and B, the monkey was so well-behaved. What would happen if, like, the monkey got aggressive and, and jumped on the cops? Yeah, I mean, look, there's been documented instances across this country, right, where where – monkeys and chimpanzees i don't i don't know you know all the different species and then their aggression level but i know that these monkeys still have sharp teeth um and so those officers are gonna have to defend themselves it's just like you know uh, aggressive dog calls that we go on but again that monkey was so well behaved i'll be honest it it almost like broke your heart in a sense i know this guy stole a car and committed a crime but it was almost like this sense of like oh my gosh this 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 monkey's holding on to him I mean, I thought it got a little weird when they were kissing each other on the lips, but, you know, it was still hugging each other and stuff. Um, but no, I, you know, you, you handle it with professionalism. Um, and again, I think, you know, the roles reverse should that animal become a little bit more aggressive than they had the leash. They could probably have yanked that thing into that cage pretty quickly. Sure. So what, what did you think of the officers letting the alleged carjacker say goodbye to the monkey? All right. You want to say goodbyes? For now, like there's only one in the sanctuary for temporary. I mean, they did absolutely the right thing. I mean, this has got look. The guy knew he screwed up. He's he's going to jail. In fact, I, I was saying I was looking today to see you know whatever happened with this case. I really couldn't find anything. But there's plenty of times. Um, you know, where I, I had to take someone to jail on a traffic stop and they had their dog in the car or something like that. Hey, can I just tell my dog by? Absolutely. Again, it goes back to if, if you're going to cooperate with me, I'm going to do what I can to cooperate with you um, in that type of situation and, and help you out. So I thought, you know, they showed such professionalism and, and kindness towards that um, guy, because it, obviously it was, a, you know, you could tell this guy was highly attached to this thing. It was like his child, um, though it was his pet monkey in a diaper. But no, I mean, I commend these law enforcement officers and especially in today's time where there's so much heat on law enforcement officers. I thought they did an excellent job. Yeah. And like you said, it was kind of like his kid, because not only did they let him say goodbye to the monkey, but the monkey then gave him a a, a little tender hug. I mean, Chad, that that had to break your heart. Like there's only one in the sanctuary for temporary. Yeah. I mean, I, I was sitting in the car and I was, uh, we, we, I was heading up here to North Carolina. I was like, and I showed my, my couple of coworkers I was with, I was like, look at this. And they were like, Chad, are you getting emotional? I was like, uh, no, not a, okay. Maybe I am getting a little emotional. I mean, it was, it was like this little tiny monkey hugging this guy. It's almost like the monkey was a, was a human and knew that their, his owner was going to jail. Um, but again, I, I, something tells me this turned out. Okay. Um, I, I'm sure hopefully by now this guy's re- reunited, uh, with this pet monkey. Yeah, and that's exactly what I wanted to ask you. So, permit or not, does that guy allegedly stealing a car hurt his chances of getting the monkey back once he's out of jail? No, I, I don't think so at all. Um, you know, it's uh, m- many times like on same thing with the animals that we, we see from a car. A lot of times, actually, and I'll tell you, the only thing that was probably a little surprising, um, and, I, and again, I don't know all the backstory, but a lot of times we'll try to call a relative. Um, to come get an animal that's in the car. Hey, do you have a brother, sister, mom, dad that can come get this? Um, that was the only thing that, <clears throat> but again, if he wasn't from that area or whatever, um, then you're probably going to have to take that guy, you know, animal to some, some type of shelter or humane society and hold it um, until he gets out and, and can provide the proper documentation that he is able to legally possess. I'm like, yeah, I think I think a fish and wildlife officer came in too, and I guess he helped the deputy. So it's like, that, is that normal from a sheriff's perspective? It is because they have more of that background. Uh, you know, in South Carolina, we call them uh, DNR officers, Department of Natural Resources, and they know a lot more about the the legality, the licenses on, on that type of stuff. Um, 
more in depth than we as you know normal deputy sheriffs or police officers get at the academy. Um, so I would highly you know rely on his expertise. All right, Chad Ayers, a unique uh, situation, and I would say somewhat heartbreaking too. You even said it yourself, Chad. I know you. You're a former SWAT, former sheriff. You said that video got you emotional. So you can only imagine what it did to people watching on YouTube and various other places. Chad Ayers, tell people where we can find you. Yep. Uh, Proactive Response Group. Uh, I now run a company. We teach active shooter response, workplace violence prevention to corporations, churches, and schools. Uh, we're on Instagram. Follow me on there. I put out some great content. And um, Christmas is right around the corner. If anyone wants to uh, gift me a monkey, uh, I'm down. And and in diapers, too. Just It to has to be in diapers and on a leash. Yeah, you can never be too careful. Chad Ayers, thanks so much for coming on Long Crime After Hours. Sam, great to be here. All right, and that's it for this edition of Law and Crime After Hours. Thank you, Chad Ayers. Mikey Dininger is our video editor. Bobby Zoki is our YouTube manager. I'm Sam Goldberg, and we'll see you next week.